Watch this. Using AI, I've been able to totally change the game. With just a simple screenshot and a transcript, I've been able to recreate almost any NAN workflow you see online, just like this. You heard right. I've learned how to create NNN workflows either using plain text or using just the image of the workflow with the captions, coupled with some minor final adjustments. No JSON writing, no premium templates, and minimal technical skills, just using Claude 3.7 and NNN. If you're new here, I'm Eddie. I built my own consulting company serving mid-sized to Fortune 500 clients to over 55,000 a month, with our highest month being $132,000. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to generate working NNN workflows using plain language prompts. You'll be able to recreate automations you find online, even if you're not technical, and shortcut your learning curve by borrowing NNN from any pro on the internet. This is the easiest way to clone what works and make it your own. It's not 100% perfect, but it should save you hours in the NNN building process. So this is the plan of how this is gonna go. First, I'm gonna take you to Claude Project so you can see exactly the details of what you need to get this going. Then we'll give a demo of a plain text prompt of something that may be useful that comes to your mind of what you would like to create, but you just don't know where to start. And then we'll go to YouTube to actually find an image of a flow along with the transcript so that we can actually recreate it very easily. So let's do it. First of all, let me actually show you a detail that's very important of why this, this system is important in the first place. So if we were to actually go to NNN and we were to go to any node at all, let's say Gmail, uh, trigger message received, um, every single node in NAN has a specific JSON and all these no-code tools that are essentially like the ID or the fingerprint of what makes that node uh, able to be possible for us that are a little bit less technical. So if I copy that and I paste it, you see the JSON is like this. It's a very specific structure that makes this beautiful little image and all the functionality that it has. Now, normally, if you ask an AI, make me an NAN workflow or a make.com workflow or anything like that, give me the JSON for it, it's, it can try, but it's not really going to have it perfect because it can have this structure a little bit different that um, is not how NAN actually reads it natively. So what we do to actually combat that is right here. So if we go to claw.ai slash projects, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and press a new project. We will put uh, NAN, NAN creation mastermind, let's see, or master, let's say that. We'll go ahead and create a project. A project, if you guys aren't familiar in Claude, is essentially uh, what it sounds like. Instead of having many different threads or chats, you can just have a holistic place where you can have um, a place where you can actually upload specific documents or for a certain work stream, maybe you have a project for your marketing department, your sales department, your operations, and all the separate files that you may have so that you have all the context there that's appropriate. So what we would actually do is we would go ahead and press uh, project knowledge to add content on here from the actual device. And let's go over here and let's go to NAN creation agents. What we'll do is we will actually upload a couple of these uh, here. That is what actually makes all the difference right here. Okay, so if we actually upload these, which I'll provide all of this for you in the uh, description so you have it totally available to you. Basically, what it does is it's a comprehensive details uh, sheet that actually gives the sort of best practices of how to actually structure a node and what sort of framework to have. Think of it like a instructions so that the AI can actually reference this when actually creating all the individual nodes and configuring it properly. So you see examples here of a calendar integration, memory, buffer nodes, uh, AI agent nodes, etc., which again have specific structures which are reinforced here as far as the way that different nodes are actually put together. So it's important to have these so that the AI has more fuel, so to speak, or knowledge to be able to use the, the more accurate structure to create closer to fully functional NNN flows, not just guessing what JSON would actually work. Now to make this even stronger, what we would actually do is we will add uh, templates that we know work into it, which you can actually get from the NNN uh, website, which I believe it's workflows right there. And um, on here, you can get as many NNN workflows that are publicly available to you. And I would upload, you know, 
five, 10, 15 of them in there. Um, it's even better if, especially if you're doing a plain text prompt that uh, you put workflows that are more relevant that have the nodes that you're familiar with if you are a bit more versed in NNM, just so that it knows to, to copy those. So we'll go ahead and paste some in there so we have everything in order. So you'll see I just imported some of these uh, functional flows from the NN website and um, if you wanted it even easier I have a lot of custom flows in the description for you that I have created along with over 250 or so from the website again totally for free for you just in one organized place but um, I put some in there again so that the AI actually gets deeper context of what functional and it end flows actually look like so that it has a little bit more context now for project instructions we are going to want to set set this so it has better details so what system instructions are are essentially identifying features that you're giving as instructions to the system to let it know this is how you should behave so number one reference all knowledge base files so it might some AIs may want to use the internet or use its own knowledge base we're letting it know that the priority is to use the files that we have here there's a description of the workflow of how it starts how it's supposed to continue it'll actually give a sticky note of um, giving a description of each workflow um, the important details as far as configuration to make sure everything is super accurate no placeholders or partial JSON again if you're not technical you don't have to worry about the specifics here just know that this stuff is important sometimes you could have errors in JSON and parsing and things like that that you don't really want to have and uh, here as well sometimes if you're doing plain text and you want a specific custom type of a flow we want it to ask questions if there's any sort of missing details that we may may want Want, but didn't say in our original prompt it'll sometimes push back at you to say hey look uh, did you actually want this or does this feature sound good to you etc etc and for output format again since we want to uh, have it as functional and usable in NNN it's going to be in JSON so JavaScript object notation format again if you're not technical you don't have to worry about it all you're gonna do is essentially copy the code that it gives you and then paste it into NNN to make it super easy for you okay so then we have that as a foundation of the system and how it's able to get you to at least 80% or so of a totally functional flow and save hours in your efforts alright guys so let's create a plain text response so if we were to say something like I don't know create for me a simple NNN workflow that watches a Google row for values then sends an email to me with the updated information and ultimately logs that into a Notion database. Make it simple, thanks. Notice I didn't do a crazy complex prompt there uh, with all the standard prompt procedures that you would normally do as far as uh, making sure you get the best, most clear output possible. But I know for most people, again, being super beginner friendly, you might have a simple prompt like that and it'll give you a response. There we go, guys. It just completed. And you'll see here it'll, it'll actually give you some additional information to make things a lot easier for you to understand. And you'll also see when we go in there, it'll actually have some sticky notes so that um, it's even easier to reference while you're already in there. So if we go to NAVN, let's go ahead and press uh, paste, command V for myself, might be control V for you we'll see we got something like that. So exactly as you stated, maybe you want a very simple flow like this. And so it creates the Google Sheets trigger, right? Essentially watching Google Sheets, any update, it'll then go ahead and send an email for you. And then it'll log the updated information onto the database. And you'll see this actually works and it'll have on here, these things auto populated JSON row number for the title. And then all you have to do is essentially uh, go into your credentials, and um, so it actually, you know, connects to your account with your appropriate information. So you'll see right there with the sticky notes, it'll populate this for any type of flow that you create so that you have a little bit of deeper context of what it is that uh, the flow is doing, especially as a beginner, it's very helpful. So you get a little bit of a description if you wanna play around with different types of workflows. So yeah, this node watches specific Google Sheet for changes. When a row is added or modified, it triggers the workflow. Sends an email notification with the updated row info to your specified email address, and then logs the updated information into a Notion database for record keeping. So yeah, you can do a ton of different things 
if you are going to do more sophisticated, more advanced workflows, which you totally can experiment with, again, it's not 100% accurate, but it should get you pretty close so that you can tinker with the final details and uh, it'll allow you to experiment and get a lot more flows done a lot quicker. So now let's go into the other side of things. If you're actually going onto YouTube and you're finding all these flows and you're like, you know, how do I rebuild these? I'm not that technical. It's kind of hard to recreate it, even if you are technical. So if we were to actually go into YouTube and actually search something simple like simple and agents referencing the clip that you saw in the beginning of the video, and we go ahead and click one big, this one's pretty popular and say, hey, I want to recreate this flow. I like it. It looks great. Let's go ahead and take a screenshot of it like that. We'll go up to Claude and let's paste the screenshot right in there. We will go back so that the, first of all, so that the Claude agents or the Claude project has context of what the image is and be able to extract details visually. And then we'll click the description here. There will be a show transcript button that'll load. And then you will go ahead and screenshot, uh, not screenshot, but uh, highlight, copy and paste as much of the detail on there as possible so that it has even further context and then we will say recreate this for me realistically with the system instructions all the other context you probably don't even need to say anything at all but why not so it just finished it has all the json here with all the specific details it even has a further details here about other options that it actually provides so um, if we go ahead into the json and we press copy and we go over here and we'll press paste and then let's go to full screen and then you'll see it usually comes out as like a jumbled type of mess so let's see if we can fix this Oop. let's go ahead and move this trigger over here let's move whatever that is out of the way email system agent brain memory agents and um, okay so we got a couple errors here we see with calculator and uh, time tool so that happens sometimes where it does and that would happen even more commonly if you didn't have the specific documents in the project and you just use basic AI to try to get that structured. So we see here we have a memory, uh, the open AI model, an e a tool as an email, okay, and uh, we have that there, okay, edit fields. And for some reason this weather tool is connected here. I don't know why that is, but let's go ahead and move this over here. So yeah, you're always going to need to do some minor adjustments to fix things up, sometimes minor, sometimes a little bit more, but uh, it all depends on the type of flow that you're actually doing. And you can make it even more accurate by the example ones that you actually put into the Claude flow as far as the example and end workflows you'll actually be able to determine how uh, accurate it'll be depending on which ones you put in there. So if you're using a Telegram node, or if you're using a specific type of AI agent, or if you're using a uh, Gmail uh, system or something like that, if you can provide it and in examples that reflect those nodes, then the higher the accuracy is gonna be on there. But uh, yeah, you'll see it'll actually give you sticky notes so that it'll explain to you exactly what it's doing so that you can actually play with it yourself and then change the different details of what you need to do there. But you see that's a lot easier than spending however long it takes you, 20 minutes, an hour, five hours, to build a system versus, okay, I am on square one, and uh, let me go and take a screenshot, copy and paste the transcript, and get everything in there. There we go. If this helped you out, give it a like, drop a comment, letting me know what you wanna see next. Smack that subscribe button clean across the face. It really helps more than you know. And huge thanks for all the support lately. The channel's been growing fast and I'm super grateful to everyone jumping on while it's early. And if you want the exact prompt, cheat sheet, and setup that I use, check the instructions in the description below. Everything's there for you once you're subscribed. I appreciate you. See you in the next time. Take care.